In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own dashboard reports and then go on to show you how you can mine the data in those dashboards to further produce any number of ad hoc reports that can be shown both on screen or output to Excel for further processing or to be printed. So to get started, I've already logged into Forecast Plus and I've navigated to the projects area. Now this opens up to the top level project dashboard called the project managers dashboard, which I can tailor to my own preferences by moving the reports around and resizing them as needed like this. Now on the left over here is where I can open up any project or program in this hierarchical tree. But for this video, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look instead at things more globally to report on multiple projects together. Now on this project managers dashboard, I can select which reports I show by hitting this plus sign or hitting this X over here to remove any one of these reports from the dashboard. But before I do any of that, I'm first going to create a brand new report that I can add to my dashboard. Now you can see I'll, I already have a combination of charts and tabular reports here, but I want to create a new tabular report. And I want this report to be focused on comparing key performance metrics across all currently active projects. I want that report to quickly show which projects are doing well and which are potentially struggling and what the general status is of all these projects. Now, so to do that, I'll click on this second tab for custom reports and charts. And in this area, there are four sub tabs, which are custom dashboard reports, custom charts, custom templated reports, and custom fields where I can design my own customized formulas. But for this example, I'm going to create a custom dashboard tabular report. And from there, I'm going to create a global report. A project level reports only show data for a specific project, whereas global reports show data across many or all projects. So I'll click new to create the new report. For the report data set, I'll pick the project category for the report. And from there, I'll pick the All Projects Summary component. Now, this data set is focused on high-level project information and metrics, which is exactly what I need for this purpose. As you can see, now that I've selected that, the available data fields to include in the report are populated down below. But before I get to that, I'll first give the report a name and a description. I'll leave these two options here selected since I do want this report to be available on both the project managers dashboard and as well the executive dashboard, which I'll show you a bit later. Okay, now I can select which data columns to include in the report. Now scrolling up and down here, there are clearly a lot of options in this data set. So when doing this, I find it's preferable to be very selective. Otherwise the report can get quite big. Now remember, there is no limit to the number of reports that can be created. So personally, I like to create more focused, purposeful reports. Okay, so with that in mind, I'll start choosing columns. I'll use the filter to find the columns that I want, starting with project name and project manager, which I'll include into the report. And I'll make these columns a bit wider to fit uh, a larger field. I'll also add a baseline and a current budget. Which, in this case, I'll set to sum on the totals row. Okay, now that I've added my desired data columns, I can drag and drop the columns around to order them in terms of how they'll appear in the actual dashboard report. I can also preset a grouping option so that the report is grouped by any one of the chosen fields. For this report, I'll group by project manager. 
Okay, now to make sure it all looks good before actually deploying it onto a dashboard, I'll save this and have a look at it. So to see it in action, I just have to click Run. Now this first pops up the date range options for what data will appear, along with the option to filter the data by project status. I'll select, in this case, in progress status to view only those projects that are currently active. Now the report launches into this temporary window to make sure that the data and the column widths and ordering all look good. I can go back and tweak things if necessary, but I think in this case I'm happy with how it is right now. So I'll move on to load it onto a dashboard. So back on my project manager's dashboard, I'll first close a couple of these uh, reports that are here just to simplify what I have uh, to make it a little bit easier to look at. Um, and then I'll click on this plus sign here to add my new report to the dashboard. Okay, here it is. So I'll select it and save. So now it's on the dashboard and I'll just uh, resize it. Um, now, before actually loading the data by clicking this update button, uh, it's always a good idea to check the date range first. Uh, now, I can do that by clicking on this tools icon to set the date range. Okay, I'll quickly enter some dates and set the status to in progress and I'll update. Okay, now that I have my data loaded, I'll play around with the data a bit to show you how I can further tweak what's showing in my data set. Now you can see here, as, I, as configured, it is grouped by project manager, which I can collapse. I can collapse each project manager if I want to zero in on just one of them. I can also, I can remove the grouping and then bring it back if I want. In fact, I can group really by any column that's in the report. And now to focus on the underperforming projects, the ones that are potentially struggling, I'll filter by CPI less than one. When I apply that filter, notice that all the CPI in this column are, are less than one, and that's typically a decent indicator of the projects that are performing under what is expected by plan. I could have also done that. I could have accomplished that same thing by filtering by a negative cost variance over here. But either way, the intent is to show which projects are in need of a bit of help. And let me also change the status here to completed. So I can change the view of what I'm looking at from the in-progress projects to uh, completed projects. And this will show all completed projects that underperformed in this date range. Okay, so now remember that at any point that I, I want to actually have a look at this data or export it to Excel, I can click this little Excel button to export this data, which will export it as it's shown on the screen. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you is how you can set up an executive dashboard. So I'll open up the business intelligence area here in a new tab. Now in the executive dashboard, these reports, these dashboards work very similarly to the project manager's dashboard that I was showing you earlier in that I just use this big plus sign to load any new report, which I'll add my new report now. Even though it works the same as a project manager's dashboard, what's important about the executive dashboard is that you can be very selective about which reports can be shown here 
so that you can carefully control who gets access to what. In other words, the functionality of the report here is identical to what I was showing earlier. The only difference is the audience.